you won't let me play with you, then I'll just create a league of my own. A simple saying that started the story of Negro Leagues baseball. The Negro National League was established right here in Kansas City, February 13, 1920. And it's only fitting the story comes to life at the only Negro Leagues baseball museum in the country, right in the heart of America. And Bob Kendrick, president of the museum, is the perfect person to tell the story. When you walk in, here's the statue of Buck, and he's overlooking what we call the field of legends. Buck O'Neill, the co-founder of the museum and legendary Negro Leagues baseball player. And it was Buck's idea to do a Negro Leagues baseball museum. He just felt like this story deserved to stand the test of time. You not only come here and witness the rise and subsequent fall of the Negro Leagues, but you literally witness the social rise of America simultaneously. Those two things go hand in hand. Starting with Jackie Robinson, the first African-American to play in the major leagues. But before that... There are so many who did not know that Robinson's illustrious professional career began right here in the Negro Leagues with the Kansas City Monarchs. But there would be no Jackie Robinson or Negro Leagues baseball if it weren't for... Let me introduce you to Rupe Foster, the genius. It would be Rupe Foster who would establish the Negro Leagues here in Kansas City in 1920. Foster would go on to create a league that was way ahead of its time. Now the history book will tell us that the first professional night baseball game was 1935. Crossley Field, Cincinnati, Ohio, Cincinnati Reds versus the Philadelphia Phillies. Well, the history book is wrong. The first professional night baseball game, 1930, and it featured our very own Kansas City Monarchs. But the museum highlights both the good and the bad to help educate generations. So when they come in and see that there was no place for these athletes to eat between Chicago and St. Louis, or between St. Louis and Kansas City, unless they could find a black-owned establishment, it blows them away. But what you have to admire about the story of the Negro Leagues is they never allow this to kill their love of the game. A love that goes beyond race or gender. And Beauty of the Game celebrates the little known, but very profound role that women played in the Negro Leagues. They didn't care what color you were, and they didn't care what gender you were. Can you play? Do you have something to offer? Yeah, that's what makes the story of the Negro League so incredibly profound and so compelling and so awe-inspiring. It represents everything that our country is supposed to be. That's part of the reason this story has been explored by many, from presidents and former President Bill Clinton and former President George W. Bush to First Ladies, Laura Bush and First Lady Michelle Obama, along with a number of celebrities and athletes, all taking a trip back in time in this special treasure that will, in the words of Buck O'Neill, stand the test of time. The Negro Leagues Museum doesn't need to survive. It has to survive so that we don't lose this precious piece of baseball and Americana. Reporting in Kansas City, I'm Greg Payne for KCTV 5 News.